if everybody's ready. My, my name is Mark Hoppen. I'm your trainer. Uh, this is my first year as a 5020 uh, vocational service chair. I've been on the committee, vocational service committee, for nine years. During that time, I spent four years as the youth services chair for District 5030. I'm a past president of Gig Harbor Midday Rotary. I've been a Gig Harbor Rotarian since 1992. And uh, currently, I'm back in Gig Harbor Rotary uh, because up north, uh, closer to Seattle, I'm a city manager. And uh, I am a guest member, oddly enough, every Wednesday uh, at the Rotary Club of Des Moines and Normandy Park in District 5030. And then I go to my own club in 5020, Gig Harbor Rotary, on Fridays. My objective today is to uh, give you a view of Rotary's legacy, to talk a little bit about uh, the history of vocational service in Rotary, uh, to give you a glimpse of what Rotary has to offer, uh, things that we don't generally think about very often, and to uh, draw some connections that normally we might not make. Uh, the building you're looking at in Chicago in 1905 was built in 1877. It was the first steel structure building uh, built in the United States, even before New York had buildings like that. Uh, you can see that even in 1905, Chicago was a big bustling place. And even though it was bustling and there were cars, uh, Chicago was not fully developed. You can see that there are horses and carriages, but, uh, you know, a tram in the middle and you had to get across the horse-drawn areas in order to get to the sidewalk. So Chicago had streets. Some of them were paved at that time, but uh, a lot of the streets were like this. And people's recreation still relied heavily on horses. Uh, it's interesting because uh, I had a grandmother who uh, went to the University of Nebraska and graduated in 1904, having been born in 1879 who lived in this environment. And uh, when I was a, a young boy, I didn't realize that the span of our family crossed over conditions like that. Rotary started in 1905, but it didn't take very long for Rotary to expand. The first club in 1912 was in Winnipeg outside of uh, the United States. And so Rotary obviously expanded very fast. In 1924, some of the original members of Rotary were, were still together. If you go on to the website, uh, the District 502 website, you can actually watch a video about the boys of 1905, the original Rotarians. What's interesting is that in 1918, uh, there was the Spanish flu epidemic and all these original Rotarians survived that. Uh, they're here, you know, uh, some years later, um, still healthy, still surviving. Uh, that's Paul Harris in the middle in front. Paul Harris is an interesting guy. He was born in 1868, so uh, about 11 years before my grandmother. Uh, he graduated from the University of Iowa and spent uh, six years gallivanting around doing odd jobs uh, throughout the West before he finally settled in Chicago. Uh, he opened his practice in 1896 and nine years later got the notion to start Rotary. Interestingly, in that same year, he got married to a young lady from Scotland and they lived in a fairly nice suburb of Chicago. And uh, Chicago was a very robust, but pretty highly evolved place. He had the unique notion that if we did several things, we would be able to enhance each other's business opportunities, to uh, serve and, and to empower each other. And vocational service is one of Rotary's initial founding purposes. Uh, service, empowerment, inspiration. Vocational service includes connecting our professions and professional networks with our Rotary Club activities, using our expertise to address community problems and help others discover new vocational opportunities and interests, and promoting Rotary's commitment to integrity in our professional as well as personal lives. Sometimes we think that we're 
a long ways removed from the initial Rotarians that started these purposes, but we're not. When you consider when Paul Harris was born, uh, the Alamo, Davy Crockett, uh, was in 1836. Uh, Paul Harris was born uh, not even 100 years after uh, the, Con the Continental Congress that uh, generated both um, the Declaration of Independence and, and later uh, the Constitution of the United States, uh, Canada's independence came after his, um, after his birth. So we're not very far removed. And my grandmother uh, in 1879, graduating in 1904, uh, really a contemporary of Paul Harris, uh, was somebody I knew as a young boy. So we think of ourselves as being far removed from the past, but we're really not. Professionals join a Rotary Club as representatives of their particular business or profession and have a dual responsibility to represent their vocation within their club and to exemplify the ideals of Rotary in their place of business. We also have a commitment to integrity and ethics. The four-way test and the Rotarian code of conduct are something that we come in contact rather often when somebody is inducted. Interestingly, uh, the code of conduct has changed fairly recently in an interesting way. I mean, we have to act with integrity and high ethical standards. We have to deal fairly with others and treat them and their occupations with respect. We have to use our professional skills through Rotary to mentor young people and to help those with special needs and to improve people's quality of life in uh, my community and in the world. We're to avoid behavior that reflects adversely on Rotary or other Rotarians. And fairly recently, there's a commitment to helping maintain harassment-free environments in Rotary meetings, events, and activities to report any suspected harassment and to help ensure non-retaliation to those individuals that report harassment. Um, normally, I've thought of that kind of behavior in, connect in, in connection to youth, but not so much uh, Rotary in general, and it's interesting that that has been articulated. Vocational service is touted by Rotary to do a number of things. They suggest that you can host business networking events with non-Rotarian professionals in your community, offer career counseling, career guidance, or apply professional skills to a project. But how does that really flesh out in our district? A couple of years ago, I asked that question and uh, asked folks throughout 5020 exactly how we actually conducted ourselves vocationally in this district. So in 2018, 75 clubs, over 80% of Rotary District 502 clubs responded to a survey assessing vocational service activities. And this is what was discovered from the most frequent district-wide vocational service activities and projects to the least. The most frequent activity vocational in the district is scholarships for students, followed by classification talks, workplace visits, tours, and mixers, vocational service awards for students, Rotarians, and community members, high school job readiness activities, intra-club vocational service awareness activities, uh, membership surveys, theme meetings, table changers, business-oriented programs, and vocational service hands-on community projects. Uh, for instance, in uh, Gig Harbor, the Rotary Club of Gig Harbor has a project providing uh, readiness skills for job acquisition for women that leave the correction center. Interestingly, in British Columbia, uh, those kind of things are managed as part of the bureaucratic structure of the correction system. So uh, Washington is a little bit less evolved in that sense, but we pick projects that do the most good in our communities. And this is one that's coordinated with uh, uh, police and with, uh, educational tracking through Seattle University, uh, as well as through the local Rotary Club. It's a very interesting longitudinally uh, hands-on project. Further down the list of vocational service high school activities, participation in trades programs, sponsorship to programs, trade evenings, and then celebrating the four-way test. Interestingly, on the vocational service committee, something you can access, in fact, you can access all this information that you're going to see today on the District 5020 website.
And if you want more information or to watch the boys in 1905, that video is available through the site. Um, also, somebody you can contact, uh, Corrine Gregory, actually has written a book called Character Counts, a book about the four-way test and its history. It's a very interesting book. Um, internet activities, Interact activities, Rotaract career activities, RILA career activities, all have a vocational orientation. Um, and then there are other frequent but less significant activities. Uh, something that the district tried to get uh, underway for years is ethics training. Uh, there are people in the zone that can provide quite a bit of information about that, uh, as can I and uh, also joining the Chamber of Commerce. We don't think very often about some of the rotary tools that are available to us. Uh, one of those tools is joining a rotary fellowship. Uh, there are uh, activities where Rotarians have common interests, vocations, or recreational interests. Uh, you can join a fellowship. Uh, if that fellowship that you want doesn't exist, you can organize one. Interestingly, a new group must have at least 25 potential members representing at least five countries. Now you'd think that might be pretty hard to do, but it's not. Actually, this is the sum total of fellowships currently available. Like many things in Rotary, some of them uh, are more available than others. We'll just suffice to say that, uh, that all these are available to you when you click into them off the 502 website. And what you would have noticed in the rowing site is that it comes up in German. And then you can click an English translation and it suddenly morphs into English. Another possibility to, is to join a Rotary Action Group. Uh, similar to other activities, Rotary Action Groups, one of the chief things about all these activities is there a way for you to touch other Rotarians to gain not just fellowship, but also to figure out how to conduct projects in a broader way. Uh, the Rotarian Action Group site is a way to touch other projects that have already been started that may match what your club wants to do. Uh, you can start a Rotarian Action Group by having uh, prospective members from at least five countries and three zones. Now you'd think that might be pretty hard to get going too because of the multiplicity of zones. But similarly, it's not either. And these are current action groups that are available to anyone. You can see that they reflect most of the Rotary International projects or even community projects in some cases that uh, can provide connection for a large number of rot Rotary clubs around the world. Another, uh, another option uh, to stay current on vocational information is to do a vocational service newsletter. And you can subscribe to that at that site. All these links are active on the 502 website when you go into them. There's also uh, an online introduction. Uh, nine years ago, when you started sharing information about this kind of thing, there was only hard copy information that you could distribute by visiting clubs or mail. But now, of course, all this information is readily available by download. Another opportunity is to use the Rotary Showcase. Now, uh, this one, I am absolutely determined to figure out a way to show you. One of the things that we can do in this time when um, we're going to try to get back to work and we're going to try to connect is to connect Rotarians with Rotarians. And something any of you can do is to access uh, the Great Northwest Rotary Business Network. And uh, this network is available. You can Google it. It's a, it's a kind of a work in progress, but it started out as a District 5030 website. There are numerous websites like this around the country, but this one's a little different in that it's pretty easy to use. Uh, because I'm a, a visiting Rotarian up north, uh, I kind of stumbled into this website, talked to the district governor in 5030, Bill McElroy, and talked him into including District 5020 as a regular client for this site. Uh, what happened is that uh, the idea has expanded. Uh, sometime after this DTA session, it'll be possible to have this Rotary Business Directory 
available from BC through Oregon, about six Rotary districts. Uh, I've shared this with the Rotary Club of Gig Harbor, and there are already nearly a dozen Gig Harbor Rotarians that have signed up for it. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, you have to go through the lens of Bill McElroy in order to assure him that you're actually a Rotarian. But once you're into it, you'll see that it's pretty easy to use, to sign up for, and that you can do searches off the site that enable you to go by location or by function. And so uh, you can sign up uh, by a mix of uh, US and Canadian um, interests or strictly Canada or strictly the US as you choose. And then you can batch by function uh, within those subdivisions. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting thing to do. Now that you're up, Barb, you can uh, show people how this works. Uh, scroll down on the, on the first page to show them that you can browse by category. So you can stop there. Uh, you'll notice that some categories have a significant number of people signed up already. Uh, scroll up just a little bit. Uh, you've got, uh, let's, let's click into the business and professional services area. Okay, and scroll down that and you'll see the kind of formats that you can generate. Uh, scroll down a little more, a little further. Let's, let's go, let's see if I can. Okay, now let's go, let's go back into the previous frame. Uh, let's go to um, construction and building. Okay, scroll down until you get to Brett Marlowe Design. Now, Brett's a Gig Harbor Rotarian that just signed up. On the right side of your screen, Barb, if you'll click visit website. And then scroll down and you'll see what Brett has put together for her own business. Uh, similarly, all these sites have these kind of uh, connections. And so that's, that's a pretty interesting thing. Let's back out all, all again back to the home page. Back. Okay, now go to sign up on the top scroll bar. And scroll down a little bit. You'll notice there's no charge to Rotarians, free, free, free. And you can pick whatever mode you wish uh, in order to sign up. It's not hard to do. And, uh, you know, in an era of COVID, when we're learning how to do all this uh, through Zoom and other uh, social media, one of the things we can still do is what Rotarians were doing in 1905. Interestingly, they had to stop Rotary meetings for three weeks during the Spanish flu. That's all the more they actually stopped during that period of time. And uh, most people survive that, just like we're going to survive this COVID. But the difference is that we have this tool available to us in order to try to help other Rotarians regenerate some of their business activities to participate in recovery. I think this can be a very interesting tool. And since it's a, a you know, a, a, a broad area tool, including British Columbia and Washington and Oregon, uh, it, it should be something we can all put to use. What I'm hoping to do now, Barb, is to ask folks to offer up what their club is doing in vocational service. This is Steve. There you go. Um, we have uh, eight, seven initiatives within vocational service, which in Paul's book we call for professional service. We are, we are uh, partnering with our membership committee to, on an outreach campaign uh, to businesses, uh, to bring business.
practices into a business um, membership center. We have something called Distinguished Student Service Awards. We have the Way Things Work Tours, the Future Work Lecture Series. I mentioned in a prior meeting uh, with um, Marilyn, we're forming a Rotary Club with the faculty and students at Olympic College. And we're giving grants to teachers to attend the New Space Conference and establishing a network in Kitsap County, which your club will be asked to participate in and help send a high school teacher or Olympic College teacher to the New Space Conference. So that's, that's what we're doing. Okay, uh, Darwin, you had an interesting experience this year. Why don't you unmute Darwin? Okay, Darwin is ready. Okay, I, I well, I changed clubs. We started a new club here in Paulsbo. Um, so what are you referring to, Mark? Well, you know, the, the expansion of clubs is one way that we right. can expand our vocational service. So why don't you describe the kind of club that you form? Okay, well, we, we meet, uh, well, we did meet twice a month uh, at a brewery, which uh, was different uh, from my previous club. Um, and then with, uh, with COVID, we are meeting twice, twice a month uh, by Zoom. And then once a week, uh, every other week, we're meeting with a social uh, session. The demographics of this club is, is quite different from uh, the club I, I, I I went from Bainbridge Island to this, this new club. Our average age is uh, in uh, early 40s. Um, we have a lot of young professionals and people with families. Um, we have children at our meetings because some people don't have, we have several couples that are members of the club. Uh, and uh, rather than get a babysitter, they bring the, the child to the meeting and that works out quite fine. Um, there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm in this uh, club. I, what I like about it is we're able to um, fill that niche for the younger, getting the younger Rotarian involved and engaged. That's the future of Rotary, getting more um, uh, people in their 20s, 30s, 40s involved in Rotary. And so I think this is what I, I, I observe in the, in the club, um, you know, and, you know, some of the members came from uh, Steve's club, uh, you know, I came from Bainbridge uh, to this club. Um, and uh, we have former Rotarians that uh, had left Rotary because they could not, uh, um, the time constraints of the previous uh, Rotary clubs that they were involved in were more than they could handle or the meeting time wasn't work, working for them. So we've made it easier for people to get together. Um, like I said, it's, it's every other week and uh, we meet for an hour um, and we are pushing uh, the focus of our, our club uh, is, is youth services. Um, and secondly, uh, just business network working um, and uh, I think it's working out very well. I, I see a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, our first fundraiser has been postponed because of uh, COVID, uh, but we do have, um, I, I think a good fellowship is being built up around this club. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we've, we've mm -hmm. targeted uh, getting in, um, We've been successful in getting a younger demographic into it, but we do have members my age and older. So it's uh, uh, it's it's been fun to see it get off the ground. Well, and, here's uh, a Darwin here and everyone. Here's a question for all of you. Um, right now, we all know that uh, with COVID and with uh, business being largely shut down, some reentry occurring. Uh, the social situation, the business situation being confused, that a lot of small businesses are really at risk. And uh, in the Gig Harbor clubs um, and in the, in the clubs that I participate in up north, uh, there's been an effort to try to uh, provide various activities to sustain businesses. 
Some of those uh, involve uh, restaurant activity. And uh, the Gig Harbor Clubs have banded together to uh, kind of order bomb uh, various uh, takeout opportunities in business, uh, sometimes up to 100 meals a day. Um, and, you know, uh, they're warned in advance. And uh, there's a collaboration between a given restaurant and three area rotary clubs. And then on that day, uh, at appointed times, uh, everybody buys takeout. And uh, the advantage of that is it provides an income stream uh, to the restaurants. Uh, up north uh, in District 5020, the Rotary Club of Des Moines and Normandy Park uh, is doing somewhat the same thing. They're buying, uh, they're, they're selling gift certificates and then they're giving the gift certificates away to uh, those in need or to first responders. And uh, that's an interesting idea, except for the part where uh, businesses that uh, make these gift certificates available later on have to honor them. And so it's kind of a cash flow problem, I think. Uh, so what I'm asking is, in light of uh, business closures, have any of your clubs come up with something akin to that that, that you're doing that helps to sustain small business. Um, if, if, you're, if you want to look at dimension, in the US there are over 30, I mean, it's, it's amazing really. There are 30 million small businesses and it's predicted that within a couple months, over 7 million of those will be permanently out of business, which is kind of hard to comprehend. Anyway, so is there anything? We have, we have a couple of hands up here. Hi, thanks very much. Um, I'm from Squim, Squim Sunrise Rotary. And um, yeah, I'd be really interested to hear what else we can do to keep small businesses uh, going. And, um, but I wanted to contribute that our vocational services uh, committee is working on workforce development. We've got housing shortages here in Squim. We have uh, what's called a squim shuffle. We don't have enough people to do the construction work that we need. So we've really been working on exposing our sixth grade to 12th grade students to um, vocational jobs and celebrating those and trying to change a narrative of it's not just about a four-year college. There's really a lot of great careers that don't need a four-year college. And um, so that's the conversation we're trying to start here. And I wanted to share that I am now um, on the Workforce Development Task Force for the Building Industry Association of Washington. So the BIAW did, I was on the fringes of it during this COVID, um, but they did so much lobbying to get people back to work and back to work safely. So I wanted to give a shout out to the BIAW and let you know that um, I am working on workforce development at the state level because of all the Rotary connections. So I'm really excited about that because I think there's just so much opportunity for our youth if we can um, inject our education process with um, uh, career connected learning, which it sounds like a lot of you are already doing. So that's just great. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Uh, we have Gregory Wall. Okay. I'm from the Port Orchard Rotary Club. And we're the morning club. And what we started doing in conjunction with the afternoon club and the um, several other clubs, uh, Sir Optimist, I think, and the Downtown Association, we started buying, we raised money and then we buy meals and started delivering them to people working in hospitals because they have a hard time getting a break for lunch or dinner. And now it's expanded to also provide food for people who need food or shut in or homeless type people. Uh, uh, and it's been coordinated by one of our members, um, Steve Soros. And uh, by now I'm not, we started with about $2,600. I think we must be probably up around $15,000 now that we've raised. Uh, and it's turned out to be quite a boon for, um, uh, not just the people getting the meals, but it's kept several restaurants uh, really from going out of business. Uh, and several small, we have some small, almost like uh, juice and sandwich stands and things of that nature, small restaurants. 
uh, almost of a pop-up variety, and they've actually done pretty well on this too. So um, the trick was, you know, we wanted to support the restaurants. Given that the gift cards really didn't seem to be the answer because they're not really open, but uh, we thought we could kill two birds with one stone here by also giving meals to people who needed them. So that's that's been pretty ongoing for about the last uh, month or so. I was unaware of this uh, Puget Sound Rotary Network. Uh, when Cindy and I were in Australia recently, uh, Andy Rajapas is the district governor elect taking office in the district we were visiting. And they have a similar network. It might be Rotary worldwide, the one he's showing, where you can register your businesses. But he uses it very, very effectively to bring in young professionals. It is a huge marketing tool. He, he, he shows it often when he is recruiting. He is a master recruiter. So it's a major asset. I'm glad to see we have it. Good, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, Steve, it's worth noting that the business directory uh, is a work in progress. And you've noticed that it, it started its life as the Puget Sound Rotary Network. And it's going to change into uh, the Great Northwest Rotary Network. And it'll be identified that way by its web address as well as its title. So if you're from Canada, don't be offended. <laughs> we, we've worked that out. Um, anyway. We have one more hand up. This is from Darwin. Darwin Husky. Yeah, I stepped away for a bit, so I'm not sure if Steve mentioned this, but here in Polsbo, we have a, uh, a website called polsbostrong.com. You can go out there and order a coffee or apparel and it has Polsbo strong logos on on the apparel and when you buy off that website you can designate ten dollars of the purchase price to a business uh, in Polsbo so that uh, uh, seems like a very good idea and the pricing on this is uh, it's a local uh, screen maker you know type uh, apparel printing company and uh, the prices are real reasonable but that might be something in an area where you can sow solidarity with your, your community and uh, provide uh, some income to, to them through these purchases. And uh, uh, so that's just uh, another idea that's out there on how to support your local merchants. Darwin, uh, Mark, I'd like to add to that. Uh, when the Crossroads Club spun off from the Paul's Ball Morning Club, uh, it was brilliant. It has really great innovative leaders, and it's far better than it would have been had it been a satellite of our club. Uh, they're doing pretty amazing things. Uh, thank you for your participation. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, your clubs can figure out ways in order to support small business in these times, uh, particularly the ones most at risk. Uh, it's worth noting that small business right now needs the capacity to remain open. And any imaginative ways that Rotary can figure out to assist that is a very, very significant thing because the number of small businesses that are going to disappear forever if we don't find those ways is a fairly large intimidating number. So I, I wish you all luck. If anybody wants to contact me, I'm happy to help you. 